Oh, it's so bright in here today. I'm sorry if I'm gonna squint. Hi, I'm Hales and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you all the things that I made in July. One of them um, is not clothing, so I will put that at the end. So um, if you want to stay tuned for that, then you can. If you're here just for the dressmaking, then I will put that in the first part of the video. Some of these items, you could easily sew as a beginner. I just don't want anyone to be put off and thinking that these patterns that I've made are more advanced because if you can follow a set of instructions, these have really great instructions and they take you step by step by the hand. I did a few shortcuts, but as um, if you are a beginner and you wanted to make something a bit more than just an A-line skirt or something simple, then these patterns are really good. And also, if you have a fluctuating weight, like I have at the minute, constantly have, then these will adapt um, adapt for your size, going um, increasing or decreasing waist size, etc. So, on with mat matten. Mat's a mixture between make and pattern in my head, came out as matten. So, matten number one, is the Sew Over It Alba Skirt. Now, they brought out an ebook of patterns, they were PDF. I paid for them, paid extra, and got them to print off copy shop patterns because I knew that um, the pattern pieces itself were going to be quite large. I have explained this in my June makes because I made a yellow skirt, but it was really see-through, creased like no end, and when it was hanging on the washing line, all the bugs went all over it. So. I thought, no, I'm not gonna wear that one. So I need to make one which I am going to wear and I have worn this. So this fabric is a petal, I think it is, petal green viscose. Now this came from an online shop in the UK called So 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 UK. It was a really good price. I think it was something like, it was less than seven pounds a meter, um, which I thought was a really good, um, really good deal because it's not super see-through. It has the pattern to just to make it a bit more opaque. Um, and it's got such a great drape to it. I will be inserting um, cutaways of me actually wearing it so you can see like live footage. But for now, I thought I would just show you the insides. Now the, the thing is with this, they have really long ties. So there is a shortcut um, that you can use for turning these and it doesn't involve a crochet hook. Lisa Comfort, who designed the pattern, she suggests dropping down a paper, not a paper clip, a safety pin, down it, turn it, um, like poke it into the end and then you fold it inside out. I have some turning tools from Prim, which, um, oh, hang on, let me just get them. Should be more organized. I've got a sewing box here. Now these came as a set of two. I probably have shown them in the last few, can't remember. So you have a tube and you have basically like a um, chopstick and that goes inside the other. So you get your tie when it's the wrong way round. So you need to turn it the right way round. You push it over like that. And then when you get to the end of the tie, you push the stick through. And when you go like that, it turns the, hat, turns the ties inside right side out, not inside out. Oh, sorry. I am just putting away. This was my sewing box and I had that as a birthday present when, I don't know how old I was, maybe young teen, perhaps not even before, perhaps even earlier than that. And um, I got that from my grandma. And so the inside bit, it's really brittle and it's all like the little plastic tray has all just snapped and it's all kind of worn out a bit but I, you know it's handy for bits and pieces and I feel like I didn't really get nostalgic but I thought you know I would just keep that so that kind of goes in my drawers and that has like sorry just shove it in there um that houses bits and pieces oh I can't get it in there right okay sorry about that so here is the cutaway of me wearing the skirt. So it wraps over and it has adjustable ties. Now the tie goes out of a hole in the waistband and then wraps around the back and then you can tie it at the side. You could probably tie it at the back depending on where you want that to be. But I tie it at the side. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't tie it at the front. Um, ignore that. I used a overlocker 
for the seams and I used a grey. Now I bought some cones, overlooking cones from Lidl. I think that was like two years ago and I'm still, and they were like two for two pounds or something. So I got grey, navy, white and black and that's it. And I'm still working off those same cones. Admittedly, I don't use the overlockers that much. It's literally for finishing seams, but they're still going strong. And I find with those four colors, they kind of go with more or less like the same thing. So I have at some point, um, I made some cosplay trousers for my husband and the the bit around the end, the trousers were finished off by being overlocked, just left raw on the bottom and they had to be the same colour thread as all the top stitching and everything. So I did fill, fill up four bobbins and fill them with the gutterman thread and do it all nice and neat. But that was because it had to be very specific. But for myself, no, I just whipped through on the newest colour. So um, it has quite a thin um, narrow hem so I have just overlocked it and then folded over and then sewn you know that gets sewn top stitch down that's the word I'm looking for top stitch now the yellow one I did was too long I'm five foot three and I just felt it finished at a funny length because a lot of patterns are made for people who are about five foot six clearly taller than me and so I do find that I do need to sort of shorten patterns so I took off a good couple of inches and because it's a curved hem um, I found the easiest way to do that was the back so you've got the back panel and then you've got two front panels and then they form like the sort of tulip at the front with the I took like the center back panel and shortened it there and then just graded and blended it in with the front. I found that easy to do because without affecting the curve of the item. But I still wanted to keep a fair bit of length on it. So that is the Alba skirt. You do have to buy the whole set of patterns in order to get the Alba skirt. It is not sold separately, so just bear that in mind. But if you didn't want to pay to print all the patterns out, because you think it might be a bit expensive, if you bought the book, the PDF book of patterns, um, you could just print off one one at a time and that's a cheaper way of doing it. So that is the Alba skirt. Okay, next up is also from, so the first three patterns I'm gonna show you are all from the ebook because I like to get my money's worth because I'm a cheapskate, but also I don't have a big disposable income. So I wanna get my money's worth when I do buy something. So I've, if I've spent the money on the ebook and spent the money on printing, then I wanna make more than just one pattern to get my money's worth and some of this fabric this fabric I is from my stash. I bought it locally and it was something, it was on sale. I'm sure it was only like three pounds a meter. And I'd originally planned to make um, a Vogue dress because I'd got the pattern for it, but then it was just sitting there and it's, I think it's like a viscose crepe. I remember the viscose being on the label, um, but it feels kind of crepe-like. So it has a good drape to it and it feels different for just a plain viscose. So I thought that this would work really well for the trousers. The, the, the Porto trousers, it's done, at, the pattern is done as a jumpsuit but with separate options for like the top I think it is or the trousers but I didn't want to make the jumpsuit because it's a button down with a sleeve and there's no way I'm going to easily get in and out of that when you know going to the, the lavatory so I didn't bother so I've just tried it with the trousers. Now I um, I think on all the sew over it patterns that I'm showing you I made a size 14 I would definitely size down for the next pair that I've made for this. So, I mean, there isn't much to show you. What I would say is for myself, um, the crotch length at the front, I feel is too long on me. I'm quite short-waisted. I usually shorten like the bodice of any dress pattern or anything like else. I usually shorten that by an inch. And I also find, even on a lot of ready-to-wear trousers, that that crotch length is just too long and I end up with a sort of excess fabric. Because of the way this drapes and because it's pattern fabric, it's not that noticeable, but for me, it feels too big on the waist and the front crotch is feels too long. So I think the next pair, I will size down, leave the back crotch length, but take an inch out of the front. So it has an elastic casing and it also has, it's, it's hard to see because of the pattern. Um, it has a drawstring as well, so it has a tie. So, it's quite clever in the way it tells you to put the elastic casing in and then when that's all sewn round um, you have, let's see if I can, I don't know if you can see it, 
So you sew two buttonholes and that is what reinforces the hole where the ties come out of. I have double knotted them and, and sometimes that does disappear into the seam so I might need to put a couple of extra stitches on that buttonhole just so it doesn't, so I don't lose the end of the tie. Now for the buttonhole I couldn't work out because I haven't that made, I usually I have a button and I put that on my buttonhole foot and I couldn't work out how to sew a buttonhole if I didn't have a button. There is obviously a way, I've been reading my sewing machine manual and I found out there is a way of doing it but what I, what I did was I found a random button in a tin and thought that was about the size that I wanted and put that in my buttonhole foot which then made the right size of buttonhole for me to do it. I did do a test version on scrap paper paper so I'd always recommend that with a buttonhole especially when you're not doing it for a button, you're doing it for a tie. Um, originally I'd done one, the button was too big, so the hole was too big for what I needed for the tie and for the width of the casing. So I found a smaller button, long story short, the button hole's done, ties are in, and it just helps to get, get a bit of extra gathering. I could have perhaps done tighter elastic and pulled that in, but yeah. Oh, and also these were quite long, so they finished a funny length on me and I just felt they look a bit like granny fired on me I just they didn't look nice so I wanted them just sort of ankle length so I have chopped off quite a few inches off these just to make them a bit more cropped so the original design is not for them to be cropped but that is that is how I've done it and that is that they are the Porto trousers next up is the sew over it Ravello dress now this is a wrap dress and um let me get this the right way around. And this has grown on kimono sleeves. So this is why I'd recommend this for, even if you're a beginner sewer, you haven't got to worry about sleeve insertion because it is just a grown on sleeve. Now this has, for the bodice, pleats, which you mark on the outside of the fabric, not the inside. I don't know if you already know that and I'm probably explaining it like you don't know anything. If you don't, please excuse me for that. But there, so that has uh, has front pleats which you sew down and then in the skirt part of it, of the dress, it has darts. And then those darts, I think they do on mine, line up with the where the pleat ends so you get that continuity. But as I've done mine, if you do it in a pattern fabric, no one's going to know if you're a few millimetres out. Now this has bias binding all the way around it. That is the whole edge. So if you don't like bias binding, it's probably not for you. If you just buy some bias binding and just sew it all around and hope for the best and not worry too much about if it's three millimetres out because it really doesn't make any difference. Now I will show you the inside. So when you stand up, one half folds over and then you've got the wrap on the outside. But the inside, you have this extra piece that sort of sticks out and this has elastic. This is the only size elastic that, this is the only size elastic that I had. So it's really too thick because it's half an inch. Um, but you then attach a button to the seam allowance and it's just whatever I could find. So when this goes on, there, that inside is held together. So it's, oh, right, okay. Let's get this a bit better, too short for the camera. There, so it's held with the button, so that holds that wrap, and then you wrap the other side over, then tie it on the outside, and it gives you a really close fitting wrap, and you don't have any gaping. The only thing is, I suppose, sometimes you sort of like, and I've seen Lisa Comfort do this on her video, that she sort of like adjust it a bit, just to stop it popping open with the bias binding. So you could probably put a popper if you wanted to on the V, it seems quite low, but it's not revealing. And I think it's a really flattering um, angle that it does and a really good height and it covers everything. The only thing is the length of it. That because like I said before, I'm five foot two, not five foot two, I'm five foot three, five foot three and a half actually. I'm still shorting myself. The actual dress is quite short. There is another version, which is a long version. But I thought that would just drown me. So I have made the shorter version, which is of a good length on me. But if you are taller than me, you want to bear that in mind because you might find that comes up a little bit too short. This was made in a dead stock viscose, which is from Sozo Sew UK again, and it's ex Topshop fabric. 
and it was really nice to work with and it was no problems at all. Oh, on the sleeves, one thing I would say about the sleeves is that the pattern tells you to sew on, I can't even find where it is now. The pattern will tell you to, it basically you sew on a cuff so it looks like it's folded up. And you, you sew here and here to anchor it and it says put a couple of stitches in. I felt that it was going to just, because it's such a drapey fabric, that it would just open out and you would see the raw edge on the inside. The oven timer is going off. Hang on, let me just go and switch it off. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying to multitask. I'm I've got tea on the go in the oven at the same time as filming. Yes, yeah, so I was worried that the cuff was going to unfold and you would see the raw edge on the inside. So I has top stitched them down. So they're not going anywhere and they're absolutely fine. So I would recommend doing that because when I tried on the Ravello top, I did just put a few stitches in and they do you do feel like you've got to keep fiddling with them. So you just top stitch down and then it's fine. Next up is a pattern which when I bought it, um, the company was Closet Case Patterns. They have since changed their name, so now they are Closet Core Patterns. So if you think that I'm saying Closet Core Patterns and who are they, they were Closet Case Patterns. This is their Sally Jumpsuit. Now this has been out for a while now, but I just, I've always main, meant to make it, just haven't got around to it. But a few months ago, I bought some, um, cotton jersey I'm not too sure I think it is by Croft Mill fabric and it's a really good quality and I just like the colors of it so it's navy with the red flowers um, and I just bought a good I can't remember how I think maybe three meters I bought a good length because it was I think it was only like six pounds a meter or something it wasn't really expensive had it in my stash in mind to get this pattern hadn't bought the pattern but I bought the fabric then I went ahead and got it and just did the PDF download kids are coming down hang on kids are going back up that's fine so it has the same front and back piece and it's fully lined it's self lined with the same fabric but one one thing I did do I did make up a 12 of the of the whole thing actually in some really cheap fabric which didn't really have much stretch it wasn't great normally I shorten everything in the bodice by an inch so I did the same and I did a trial version and I had such a wedgie it was I thought no I do not need to change this pattern so if you are not short waisted and you don't normally have the shorts and pattern pieces in the bodice you'll probably need to lengthen this because the bodice is super short now although um it was short I'm short waisted I did find when I did it the, the V at the front was fine but it has the same pattern piece for the back it didn't cover my bra strap across the back which was just a bit annoying so I decided to raise it by an inch at the back so I'll show you so this is the pattern piece here and that is it's not shortened this is just how it comes and then if I show you this is um, the back piece I need to line them up so I can show you how I did it so I've put this is the back piece here that I've altered. So as you can see, all I've done, it matches up with the shoulder, shoulder, like the neck seam there where it leads into the shoulder. Those pieces match up, but I've raised, that's where it should have finished, but it would be too low at the back. So I raised it by an inch and then just graded it into the shoulder seam and that seemed to be fine. So I have made sure that I, and I had to do that for the lining as well. So you must remember if you do that, You've got to do it for the back. If you alter the back piece, you alter the back lining piece as well. But the front, I just cut exactly how it is meant to be. And I'm just wondering, because some people always, some people ask what size I cut. And I cut a, hang on, because it doesn't, 14. I cut a 14 um, in the, probably in the top and the bottom, I think I did. I just went by the size. And it has an elastic casing going around the middle, which kind of brings it in quite nicely. And it has these jersey ties. They work quite well. You can tie that, if when you tighten them, it pulls them in so it covers up any shoulder bra straps. So you can wear a regular bra, you don't need to wear a strapless or anything else. And it's really easy to get in and out of. It has pockets 
and it's super comfy, but the legs are really long, really, really long. I shortened the paper pattern leg length and I still had to chop off at least a good couple of inches off the bottom as well. So if you're short-waisted, really short-waisted and have really long legs, you won't need to change this pattern. If you don't have that body shape, you will need to alter it slightly. It looks super stylish and it's comfortable and it went together really well and easily. I just made it and I mean it only took a couple of hours, maybe you probably max, just like less than an afternoon to make the whole jumpsuit and it looks like it would have made, a, you know, spent a lot of time, a lot longer making it. I feel like I'm waffling, the heat is getting to me. I feel like it's just sort of, <sighs> I still have one more thing to show you. So if you are still hanging in there, I will show you now. My final thing is curtains. I've never made curtains before. I bought some fabric, some Orla Keeley, Orla Keeley home furnishing fabric two years ago. I then bought some um, cotton bump interlining and lining and header tape a year ago and all of it has just been sat in my bedroom. And I was just putting it off because it was quite expensive and I hadn't sort of spent that much money on one piece of item, like one to make one thing before. And so I was just a bit worried and I'd never, I didn't know what I was doing. Our dining room is open plan to our conservatory. The previous owners knocked through, which is fine, but in the winter time, all that heat escapes out into the conservatory. So we've had some curtains hung up, which I'm ashamed to say they've been there for a good number of years and I got them for a pound off eBay. They were brand new, um, but yeah, they haven't been great. They didn't go with anything and they looked scruffy and they looked messy. And they kind of did the job in holding out the keeping the warm air in in winter time but i knew that i really wanted to make some thermal lined curtains so it would just hold the heat in and look a lot nicer as well so i thought right i'm gonna do it during lockdown i just need to go for it now i have the time and the other time is going off again i need to turn the sausages over hang on during lockdown i thought i would try and make the curtains there's a tutorial on over on youtube by the national trust in association with Lauren Guthrie from Guthrie and Garnet. I haven't got as full of gathers as what I would have done if I'd done them properly with like one and a half widths of fabric or something like that. But they stay open like most of the year. It's really winter time in the evenings when we draw the curtains and there's enough gather, it's fine. It's just a little bit of a stretch. It's maybe not what I would have been ideal, but it took me three solid days to make them a lot of crawling around on the floor, a lot of unpicking, a lot of hand stitching. If you, I won't go into the full details here because if you've tuned in for dress making, you'll be bored about curtain making. But if you head over to my Instagram, if you go on my profile, there is a section there on my highlights which include the step-by-step -step of what I did virtually every step of making the curtains. So you, it will just flick through on the highlights because I updated my stories as I was making them. I was gonna make curtains for the living room as well but we decided we would take the pole down and we've put venetian blinds up and it's made it so much brighter we've had the last two weeks just doing diy um in the living room so now we have because we go conservatory dining room living room it kind of flows through and now we're getting so much more light in our downstairs and i'm really happy with it but that has been painting and sanding that's why i haven't filmed earlier on in august and i haven't actually made anything but I do have some things coming up. I will probably put those in a separate video because I've probably been waffling on far too long. I'm far too hot. That oven timer is gonna go off again. I'm sorry, it's chaotic. That's what it is on this channel. If you haven't subscribed, if you want more random videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I will see you again next time.